Adventure isn't always about sweat, dirt, danger, and adrenaline. Hold on! Hold on! We're gonna get a shock load! Sometimes it's simply exploring the small corners of the world that are unlike any other. I feel like I'm walking in a movie set right now. Deep in the arid mountains of Murcia in Spain lies an ancient city. For over 2,000 years, Cartagena has been known for its economic and maritime importance, making it one of the most unique places we've ever sailed to. And since we're in a bit of a rush to sail all the way to Malta to have our baby, this quick stop is all we can afford before it's time for us to set sail once again. So when we were sailing here from Gibraltar, we were sailing dead downwind and we were using our whisker pole to pull out the Genoa. Now this is a telescoping whisker pole. So basically it can get longer when you deploy it and then it can retract into its shorter form for when you stow it. And when I went to stow this thing, I actually couldn't retract it all the way. So I'm gonna take this down, take the end cap off of the other end and see if I can just see what's going on inside. Okay, yeah, I see what's going on here. So basically the inner tube can spin around any which way it wants inside of this outer tube. But this strut connects to the head here way off to one side, which is fine inside of the inner tube with one small area that is an exception. And that is where the fasteners hold this little piece of hardware on in here where the line terminates. When the pole is extended, the inner tube can spin any which way it wants. But once it retracts, the hardware and this strut can contact. And that's actually why there's these rubbing marks on this strut here. And so if it's aligned just in the wrong way, that nut and this strut will contact as it retracts. And if I try to force it, then the nut will jam up on this strut and the inner tube can't go out or in. The solution is really simple. If I start to feel that resistance, simply spin the inner tube relative to the outer tube and then continue to retract and the strut will miss the nut and it'll be fine. So basically I just gotta reassemble this bad boy, put it back up there and I should be good to go. Okay, yeah, it's extending and retracting just fine. So that's the best kind of boat project, one where you don't even really need to fix it, just stop screwing up so much. <laughs> All right, well, it is our last day in Almerimar, so I'm getting ready to prep up some food for our passage. Jordan is behind me <laughs> working on the episode that's coming out this weekend. It's hot, so we're both barely clothed right now. <laughs> it's just crazy hot. I think this is a, a hot spell. I don't think this is what it's like every day here. The best thing is just like keeping a fan on me <laughs> and just taking multiple showers throughout the day. So we've got a really good weather window starting today to continue on our journey towards Malta. This time we're gonna make it as far as Cartagena, Spain, which is actually not that far away. It's only gonna take us like 20 hours to get there. And we're going to Cartagena because I've got some family that I'm going to visit. I haven't seen my godmother and god sister in maybe 20 years or so, so mm. I can't wait to give them a big hug. Cool, so off to Cartagena, let's bounce. All right. What do you think, buddy? Ah, it is so nice to be out right now. It's nice uh, and quiet. Yeah. Whoosh. After being at that marina where the wind doesn't really get to the boat, this feels so good. Oh my God. We're not even moving and it's only blowing six knots, but. Feels good. It feels like the wind is kissing every part of my body. Yeah, I think for me, this is my favorite moment of any passage or any sailing trip, you know? That moment when you finally get out away from the land, away from the marina, away from the anchorage, there's a little bit of wind, you start moving, just sitting here at the helm, feeling the wind on my face, looking at the instruments, 
knowing the sails are trimmed right, I get to like settle down and relax a little bit until something changes or until I need to change something. It's really pretty sailing along the coast because you can see all the small villages and towns kind of lit up amongst these big mountains. At the same time, it makes navigating a little bit more challenging because I have to make sure I distinguish the lights from the shoreline between the lights of you know, fishing boats that are fishing close to shore. But overall, not a bad place to be on a Thursday morning at 5 a.m. <laughs> Having this lifestyle of constantly moving and trying to get to Malta as quickly as possible has its stressors. We have to make sure that we're taking the best weather windows. We also have to make sure we're in port so that we can upload our episodes and give ourselves time to edit the episodes. But I've been really enjoying these you know, 20 to 24 hour sales because they really force us to just kind of slow down and appreciate what's around us. Uh, having a good day, just enjoying the breeze and the dolphins. I'm getting spoiled with these super flat, calm seas. We tried a slightly different watch schedule last night. We did seven on, seven off. I was able to sleep so much that I actually woke up before my alarm, which has never, ever happened in the history of Desiree and I sailing a boat together offshore. So I think now that we're comfortable with this boat, we're gonna be able to do longer watch schedules. This is a pretty commercial port. There's a lot of big ships at docks and kind of out at anchor. But surprisingly, right now, there's no traffic concerns. There's no boats coming in or out, which is a relief. It's nice. so cool to be in the city that's all pedestrian and so lit up. I feel like I'm walking in a movie set right now. Yeah. Man, this street's so cool. It's really narrow. It's really tall. There's tons of nice businesses, whether it be clothing or restaurants. Like, they all look really nice. Not just touristy, but like really high quality. And then, what kind of floor is this? It feels like I'm walking through someone's atrium. It's a really nice polished marble. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's called La Uva, which is a tapas bar. Tapas are little appetizers that you usually get with a beer or a wine around 9 o'clock at night. We've got calamari, curry chicken, and then we've got like a beef stew with peas. Tapas are interesting. It's very not American. Yeah. Like typically, an appetizer is something you wouldn't want a whole meal of. Yeah. This is something where it's like, no, this is straight up a meal, <laughs> and I got a tiny bowl of it. But it's cool because we get to try lots of different meals. Oso is very excited that it's not hot and that he's got somewhere to run. <laughs>
One of the coolest things to see in Cartagena is the National Museum of Underwater Archaeology. The museum houses a replica of the Mazarón II, a 2,600-year-old Phoenician sailing vessel that was discovered not far from here, long before deep water wharves and piers were used to offload cargo ships. This vessel was designed to ferry cargo from larger ships at anchor to the shore and back. The discovery of this small trading vessel completely transformed our understanding of Phoenician shipbuilding and trading practices. Yeah, there's something truly fascinating about seeing all of these objects right in front of me, seeing all of these different styles of boats going back thousands of years. It's amazing to kind of put myself as a sailor, as someone who travels and lives on the ocean, into the shoes of these people that did that thousands of years ago. And just how different their experience was, right? I mean, from the early Phoenicians, they're literally sailing in these open boats that are held together by basically string and just carrying ceramic pottery filled up with grain or whatever, you know, to the next port and doing that with zero weather forecast and sails and boats that did not sail to weather at all. And to think about the fact that with all of that withstanding, that humans have been more or less doing what we do, you know, sailing along the coasts of the Mediterranean for thousands of years is so cool to kind of see it in front of me. Next, we were off to check out the 2,000-year-old Roman theater. Crazily enough, this giant structure, which is a stone's throw away from downtown Cartagena, was only discovered in 1987, when one of the many buildings built on top of the theater was demolished. Since then, the theater has been reconstructed in an effort to represent what it would have looked like back in the day. So we've learned a couple cool things about this Roman theater. First of all, this came from a time period where the Romans were trying to kind of force their values and culture onto the really distant outposts of their empire. And so Cartagena was pretty darn far away from Rome. And it's kind of nuts to think that this was all just kind of a neighborhood until what, the 1980s? Mm -hmm. And they excavated all of this out from the foundations of the buildings and of the houses. The U.S. is so different in the sense that, you know, the advancement of technology and science and all of that has only gone up since the U.S. came to be. But in Europe, there was a huge decline after the Roman Empire fell, which is fascinating, right? You had science, engineering, art, theater, that was so advanced, like 2,000 years ago. But then when the Roman Empire fell, then all of that crumbled, and Europe lost a lot of that knowledge and tradition for a long time, like hundreds of years. So to think that like such a giant monument to art and culture was built, and then people just stopped caring about it. Like that, it's sort of like imagining if the United States collapsed, and people People started building houses in Wrigley Field and in <laughs> baseball stadiums. So this building behind me is the City Hall or the Palacio Consistorial and it's really beautiful. What's incredible is just how much money it would have cost to make these facades and make the building look like this because all of these ornate sculptures and they're really big but really detailed are all made out of solid marble and as you look around the facade of the building you can actually see bullet holes or like pieces of stone that have been flaked off by bullets that occurred from some fighting during the Spanish Civil War so pretty nuts. Much of the architecture of Cartagena is considered to be modernista, which is a style that involves lots of curves, rich decoration, and vegetation motifs. This elaborate and expensive style helped to portray the incredible amounts of wealth that historically flowed through the city, mostly from local mining operations. All right, well, today we are saying goodbye to Cartagena and we are going to finally start making our way to the Balearic Islands. Specifically, we're heading to Mallorca. It's gonna be a two night sail for us to get there and there's a slightly increased chance of thunderstorms. And I know that because I'm using the CAPE model that Predict Wind puts together. It's basically a forecast of how much energy is in the atmosphere. So it's giving you a sense of the likelihood of an unforecasted 
thunderstorm forming, right? And it's not like it's a high likelihood, it's just higher than normal right now. Because of that, I'm going to stow the dinghy on the foredeck, take it out of the davits and put it up forward. I'm bummed about that because I love having this thing in the davits, it's so easy, but it's better safe than sorry. Well, the sprint towards Malta continues. So goodbye Cartagena and onwards towards Mallorca. Hello, I am Daenerys Targaryen and this is Drogon, my very vicious protector. And we wanted to take a minute to invite our patrons to a virtual Game of Thrones themed baby shower. So if you're a patron, keep your eyes peeled today for more details about that event. Also, a lot of our viewers and family members have been asking us about a baby registry. So I wanted to include the link to our baby registry down below. Because we are in Malta, shipping is a little bit expensive on a lot of those items. So sorry about that. There's not much we can do about it over here in Malta. And finally, I'll also include a link to our PayPal donate button in the description below in case you want to contribute that way. Hope you guys have a great weekend and to our patrons make sure you get your costumes ready. We're so excited about this baby shower and we'll see y'all next week.